Alright, so we're recording now. Cool! As I say we're recording now, that'll be literally audio heard on the uh, video. So, it is what it is. The Mavericks lose this game 121-119 at home. A very hard-fought loss to Portland. Uh, as we were just saying, as we just literally wrapped up the stream... This was a good measuring stick game for Dallas. They miss out on their first 3-0 start since 2002. But you went against a really good team. Like, if you had, if you had drawn up on the schedule a week ago how you thought you were going to shake out through the first three games, your ideal scenario, your realistic, optimistic scenario still would have been 2-1. and one. Yep. So it pretty much worked out as you thought, and you had a chance in this game. You had the ball... With 45 seconds left, down one, you had a couple different possessions to make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, Luca misses a step back three. You have Dodo get a great offensive rebound, but get stripped. Uh, Portland a, is able to challenge that. That was a great, great challenge by first, Terry Stott. Yeah, yes. first meaningful challenge that we have seen um, of the coach's challenge this year. Mm -hmm. Overturns that, and so we get a jump ball situation. That ends up being disastrous for Dallas. I think KP. they should have put all four players back. Well, because they want to counter the, well, I mean, all their players back there too, so. Yeah, and it was exactly what I was warning about at that moment. Mm -hmm. I was saying, you know, hey, this is, you need to make sure you get the ball. Like, I know you want to have your guys leak out to the three-point line, mm -hmm. but you need to make sure you secure it because mm -hmm. you can take for granted. Like, you have KP in the jump ball with not Whiteside in there, yeah, but yeah. Rodney Hood. Running, you you yeah. know you're going to win the tap. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a matter of who recovers it. Yeah. And Portland outnumbered Luka 2-1 to one back there. I'm like, yeah. I don't like that at all. <laughs> so KP, unless he hits it directly to Luka, and then Luka basically has to go up for a more or less a contested rebound just to get the tip. Yeah. That was going to be a disaster, and that's what happens. KP knocks it back too far, too hard. Uh, I think Bazemore chases it down. Yeah, Luca gets the foul and puts him on the line, but <laughs> he splits it. Funny tweets are going on. We're saying um, people are saying uh, losing to a coach's challenge. That's a new one. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, that that was the decider because it was called a foul. Yeah, and he was going up, so it was the difference of free throws. Yeah, or and, a jump ball. Exactly, which and that's so what yeah, got them the possession back. That I mean, that's that's pretty. That's pretty damning right there at that point. Uh, I don't know if the NBA looks at that and says, yeah, this proves that it's, you know, this is what we wanted or not, you uh, know. Yeah. I mean, part of it, you're like, you kind of want to leave it in the player's hands, but on the, I can't on the complain rep. too much because if, if, if it was on gone, the other if, side. If it had gone our way, I'd be like, this is why you got to have this rule. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm, exactly. I'm not going to harp on it too much. It is what it is. Um, Luca does end up one one assist shy of a triple double. His second mm -hmm. straight uh, would, would be his tenth overall. He had a in lot his of career. opportunities to get it, but we just weren't making shots. We got yeah, him he, making shots. He got a lot of great setups for uh, Seth Curry. Got some looks. KP got a couple times where he was able to get fouled but not complete the play, so he didn't get the triple double there. Mm -hmm. uh, there were there were opportunities. This was not a good shooting game for Luca. He ends up in 38 minutes. KP, first 30-minute game of his uh, Mavericks career. Mm -hmm. But Luka goes 38 minutes, 29 points, 12 rebounds, 9 assists, 8 of 22 shooting. So not, you know, obviously not 50%, almost not even, a, you know, not even a third of the shots. 2 of 11 from 3, that hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, he was 10 of 11. Here, here's the big thing to me. He was 10 of 11 at the line until the fourth quarter, <laughs> and he ends up, 11 of 14 mm -hmm. so he, he was not making them at the very end he missed a couple of them he got the and one that was huge but yeah, then didn't convert it. it yeah uh kp had three missed free throws as well i'm not gonna harp on his as much because i think he only had one in the fourth quarter where you're like ah dude you gotta finish that mm -hmm. um on an and one but so we, KP, gotta, we gotta clarify this coach's challenge because i had no idea they were able to challenge that late into the game i, I think we were just yeah we we didn't know that we did not know that you could challenge at that point because years past that would just be an official review at that point. Yeah. The official would step in, review it, and make review, an assessment. But they wouldn't have reviewed that. They would review probably like uh, yeah, who's it out on or something like that. Right, it's close. But shot clock violation. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're not going to review. Was it a foul? Or was it not? So. Yeah. So we we were admittedly thrown for a loop when that happened, and it, it kind of took a second to to process that. But yeah, now we know. Mm -hmm. moving forward that's that's on the table yeah so portland yeah brilliant coaches challenge it works out for him uh dallas pretty much the whole fourth quarter had just the one uh timeout left so they couldn't really risk a coach's yeah, challenge exactly and we saw that kind of came back portland was able to, to steady things down when they needed to late in that game uh kp gets his first 30 point game as a maverick that's a highlight as well 
Awesome. 34 minutes, 32 points, nine rebounds. That is a number I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Nine rebounds, five assists. He even got a little bit of action there. Uh, first two games, I think he was three and four, so he just keeps going up by one every game. Yep. Uh, three for ten from three point and seven for ten from the line. The three of ten from three isn't great, but that percentage will round out. I just don't like necessarily him taking ten threes in a game. No. I think if he's taking eight, that feels better. But mm -hmm. you know, he had a strong game. Uh, I mean, but it's uh, just, not like, again, just a tick under fifty percent from well, the field, I'm eleven of twenty three. I'm not gonna be mad at two uh, blocks. I'm not gonna be mad at KP shooting threes if they're open. All his shots are open. He's not. He's not necessarily forcing it. Yeah. If he's open, shoot it. If he misses, it misses. But, you know, I'm not going to, you know, why are you shooting threes? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, 20, it's 2019. Basketball is shot. I mean, like, people are shooting multiple threes. Yeah. As long as they're not freaking forcing it up. Um, well, so when I'm you're, not, when you're three of at, 10 and Luca's, what was he? I know you're capable. Two of 11. I know you're capable. You might not have the best night right now, but you're capable of hitting the three. Yeah, when your two best guys are five of twenty-one from three, you're kind of thinking maybe don't take twenty-one threes. Mm. I, again, I don't, Luca attempted his step back two or three times late in that game, and it just didn't fall. I'm not torn up about that. Yeah. Um, Most players got, would be like, "Why would he shoot a step back?" It's like, yo, we we've, we've seen him make make the literally yeah. Houston last year. He made two of those in crunch time. Yep, we ain't, we ain't mad the eleven oh run. Man. Yeah, for shots sure didn't fall. I mean, you really can't blame anybody for. Uh, loss like this. This is a good team. Just like you said, this was a good barometer of where we're going to stack. They up. were in the Western Conference Finals last year. Exactly. They were the three seed the last two years exactly. in the playoffs. So, I mean, it's it's a good team in Portland, and they're going to be a Another, force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. Damian Lillard in the second half got going. He was twenty eight points on the game, despite only two points at halftime. Went from one of seven to nine of thirteen. Completely yep. flipped the script. And uh, he took over. In, our, in, in the our, first half, McCollum kept him there. And then the second half, Lillard's like, yeah, I'll do it now. And I remember in our live stream, you were, you were saying, uh, you know, at two points at halftime, yes, good defense, but also something to be concerned about because yep. that might. It's going to wake him up. It'll yeah. get his attention. Yeah, to, you know, boost him up. To... It, it, it would have been better if he had had like 13 points at half, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Because, yeah, when you're two points, you're, I mean, especially a guy like that, he's going to dial in yeah. and take he's over. Gonna look, he's going to look to get himself going. And he got he going to... by getting to the basket. Exactly. So, yeah, that that was a huge thing there. Dallas's bench was not the force this game that we had seen previously. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see here. The bench scoring... I don't have it in front of me. Curry got going late. Curry did Best Seth Curry things. Plus, 23, 20, 30, 30, Dallas had, I think, at 22? one point, 27 bench points. They were leading like 27 to 24. I didn't see where they wound up ending the game. 32, I think? Probably. That sounds about right. But 12, Curry, 11, Curry got going late. He had 12 points, and he had three big buckets in the fourth quarter. 22. And including that defensive play, too, where he uh, tips the pass, creates yeah. the turnover, goes down and splashes the mm -hmm. three. That was reminiscent, as I said, of his uh, New Orleans game yep. where he caps the shot, saves it from going out of bounds, and then gets the bucket and a spot up in transition. So he's been what we had advertised uh, previously coming in. The only thing for him, I mean, he got 25 minutes. Minutes was not his problem. Yeah. So he just, you know, he, he was like he was two also for seven from three. Yeah, two of seven for three and four of ten overall. So mm -hmm. he he was having a rough game until he got going late. He hit some big pull up jumpers and uh, a three pointer that we really needed. So mm -hmm. that was great. It just was a little a little bit of a not necessarily too little too late. I mean, in the end, it kind of was. Mm -hmm. We had the chances though, and it just didn't work out. Interesting here, we still have not seen Bobin play. Courtney Lee was a did not play tonight as well. Despite starting the first two games of the season. And I think the New Orleans game, him getting... Because he got like 17 minutes in the first game. Yeah, uh, something I, like 16, so, 17. So, yeah. Something like that, yeah. And then he only got six at New Orleans, and now he's a did not play tonight. I don't know if that says something about it, or if Rick is just trying to figure things out, not getting too hyped up on the team as far as what's working, what's not because of the early sample size. Barea was also a did not play from all the pregame stuff advertising Barea. You would have assumed Barea was going to be damn near starting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was all about Barea coming back from that Achilles. He did not play tonight either. Uh, Roby wasn't even dressed out for tonight, so there's that as well. But I'm surprised we didn't see Bo uh, Boban. Uh, I Boban, thought yeah. With, with the matchup with him and... Well, maybe because we didn't see him because Hassan Whiteside wasn't really a problem. This yeah, time. Hassan Whiteside had only had five, like five or six points. He wasn't a How problem at all. How many rebounds? And probably the reason why you will play a Boban against a White. He had 14 rebounds. 14. Okay, so he got boards at least. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, it, it wasn't a problem in that regard. The, to me, this game was Luka and KP. Kid. They got their kid. points, 29 and 32. That's beastly. Mm -hmm. But they didn't do it super efficiently. Nope. 
and the bench didn't come out to play like we need. Yeah. Dallas, when when Dallas's bench is really rolling, they're forty a night. Yeah, like that's what we that's what we need. And probably, you could say part yeah. of that is hey, Bray is the the uh, orchestrator behind that mm-hmm. when when they were really good last year before his injury. I think they need to play Bray up if they're gonna start Brunson. Yeah, we need we Brunson. Need Brunson was missing in action tonight. Yeah, if they're gonna start Brunson, then they need to play Bray up for the second squad. Yeah, they need they need a general. Um, but I mean, I think to your point, what you were saying with the bench, that's probably one of the reasons why we lost. We we'll probably have one of the second bench, un- uh, the second best bench units. I can't really think of one better. Clippers. Uh, other than the Clippers, I was about to say that. Other than the Clippers, last year before Brea's injury, mm-hmm. yeah, that that was pretty much it. It um, was Clippers and Dallas, and there were some other good ones too. But it was really those two <laughs> through the first thirty games or so last year before the Brea injury. Yeah. Uh. So losses happen. We can't win them all. No. This was close. Um. I I did like the way how it was close. Um. We were inefficient, but we didn't play bad. No. So Dallas was outshot. Forward, yeah, moving forward, this I mean, this is definitely a good test. We have, this is a whole week of test, literally. Yeah. This is exam. Oh yeah, this is this is a very tough part of the schedule coming up because now you got to go to Mile High. You got to go play in Denver. That's going to mm-hmm. be a nightmare. How then good, you turn how around. How good are we against a playoff team? Uh, yeah, and a team that's probably on, on their court. A team that could arguably be the one seed in the West this year mm-hmm. uh, in Denver. So that's going to be a nightmare matchup for mm-hmm. us, especially but, uh, especially dealing with uh, Jokic. Yeah, that that's gonna be yeah. That, but that's gonna be a nightmare. I mean, who beat them already? Uh, some team beat them. Somebody already beat them. Yeah, I don't know off the um, top of my head. I don't think it was a very notable team. Too. A, a couple call outs on this real quick. Uh, field goal percentage was a problem for Dallas defensively in this game. They were outshot fifty two percent to thirty nine percent. Three pointers forty one percent for Portland. That's scorching. And here's this too. Portland was nine of twenty two from three. Dallas was thirteen of fifty. Jesus. Dallas was only twenty six percent from three. That, that's going to be incredibly hard numbers to overcome in that alone. Where Dallas was able to kind of take back control was at the line. Dallas, most of the fourth quarter in the in the bonus, I felt like at times they took advantage of that, but not enough. Dallas shot 41 free throws, making 32 of them. Portland shot 26, making 22. So Portland, one of them was an intentional miss at the end to get the clock rolling. Mm. So, well, I mean, we nah, didn't get, you we can, didn't you got, no, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think you would call that an intentional miss because if he makes it, it's a three-point game, and at worst, you're going to overtime. It's a bad night shooting. Most nights, the Mavericks are not going to shoot 26% from the three. No. It, yeah, and we talked about that. It was it was a very inefficient night. Brunson played 27 mm-hmm. minutes and did very Most little. Turnovers pro- wasn't the problem. Though. Turnover, we had 11. 11? Well, yeah, compared Seven. to 16, though. Yeah, that, that 27 assists is a really good that's number. That's a very good number. We Rebounds? weren't even out rebounded like I thought. I thought we were going to be heavily out rebounded. No, it was it was two. It was 48 to 12 or 48, 48 to 46, 46 and with 12 them. offensive and them yeah. getting seven. Blocks four to three. That was pretty much straight up. Uh, we, fouls. We didn't foul too we, much. We I mean, draw, we draw it, more it, fouls and it was made. shooting. It was our efficiency or rather our lack of efficiency scoring uh-huh. the ball. And then we did not do enough to defend against them, mm-hmm. particularly their their main two guys. McCollum has 35, 6, and I'm 4. He shot 13 of 26. He shot 50% from the field, I'm 8 of 8 at the line. I'm going to say, maybe Courtney Lee should have played a little bit more minutes. Just or any minutes. Any minutes. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Lillard, as we said, 38 minutes, 28 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists. Again, 50%. Mm-hmm. Those two did the damage. Although Rodney Hood had 20 points too. He did, yeah. Rodney, Rodney Hood started well. very strong, and then he made some plays in that uh, third and fourth quarter as well. So they had three guys go for 20. And hey, what do we say? Dallas needs a third man. Mm-hmm. I want to see what happened with DeLon Wright here. He, was, he vanished from the game. Yeah, uh, uh, in, in the second up, half, mesh up reasons. Twenty three minutes. Yeah, his minutes were not super high. Now they did start him at the four, so maybe that dictated something to them. But twenty three minutes, eight points, two boards, five assists, three of four, and two of two at the stripe. So when he shot, I think he, Co- he did well. I think Coach Carlisle is just trying to figure out things. I mean, this is minutes have been sporadic for guys early on. Yeah, whether they might get like a decent total number of minutes, uh-huh. but. It's the way and like the breaks that they get. They'll yeah. they'll play a few minutes. They'll come out and then it'll be like a quarter and a half, and it's like, all right, go back out there. Like, mm-hmm. wait, what? I'm a little bit cold. I'm not quite in a rhythm. Exactly. So I mean, we'll see. We'll see once once he figures stuff out. I mean, it'll happen, especially when our team is as deep as it is. Yeah. Um, we're gonna see some pretty weird stuff in the beginning. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about it. Not too worried about coaching as of now. No. Um, really, nothing to be worried about because I know we're 
the sh- our shooting is not going to be this abysmal. Right. As we did today. And, you know, as we wrap this up here, to bring it back to the, the initial point, this was the measuring stick, the first real measure. I mean, Pel- the Pelicans were actually a really good team. Without Zion, I was very impressed with how good they were. Mm-hmm. But this was circled as the first real test for me on the calendar. Yeah. And yeah, we lost, but we lost a damn close game that we had. Even playing, even shooting poorly, even not defending as well as we wanted, we had several opportunities in that final minute to win the game or at least tie it. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel pretty good about that. You yeah, know, you too. lose you lose by two to a damn good team, a team that has been went to the Western the, Conference Finals last year, and in the last couple seasons in the regular season has been pretty much uh, the the class of the conference. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So. It is what it is, but they're going to have to turn around now. They got a, a little bit of a break. Tuesday, I think, is their next game. Against the Denver Nuggets. Yep, yeah. that, that's going to be a real tough, tough game. If Dallas can get through that, then they'll, you know, I, I circled on the calendar for them. If I said if they could go 500 mm. through the first 10, I, I felt pretty good about that. Some people were very optimistic saying like 7-3. and three. I, I don't know because they got Denver. Then they come back to the AAC to deal with the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Then it gets easier. You got Cleveland. It's all on the road, but Cleveland. Back home for Orlando, the Knicks, yep. and the Grizzlies. So you got to run right there where you can you mm-hmm. can make some headway. What what I want to see. Then you get Boston. Exactly. I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a winnable game against the Boston. Boston? I mean, yeah. we got to um, see where Boston's at right now. They they early on look, yeah, not the same, obviously. Exactly. But um, we just got to see. I mean, I think the Lakers are a winnable game. Yeah. I think the way the, the, way the league is set up this year, every game is winnable. Uh, what I want to see... This year, especially with the Mavs, especially if they're playing at home, I want to see us beat the teams that we're supposed to beat. Yep. The, what we did with the Wizards is what I want to see. Um, like up until year. the last like eight minutes where uh, we, no, okay. we took a 23-point lead and let it whittle down to exactly. seven. But okay. yes, I get what you're saying. But still, I want the, re- I want the result at the end of the day. Let, um, let's uh, give real quick um, a couple player call-outs here, a couple grades, if you will. KP through three games, I'm giving him an A-. minus. Uh-huh. Um I would actually, you know, I'm, I'm going to bump him to an A. I'm, I'm going to give him a little bit of yeah, a bump with, up. This was the, his best complete game to me. I know he had five blocks in New Orleans, but mm-hmm. this felt like a better game from him. This he, is what not we shooting the ball, KP, yeah. but in, in terms wise. of, yes, numbers wise, rebounding, it looked like he was more engaged in mm-hmm. that act, in that area. Um, and, you know, hey, his first 30 point game is a Maverick and all that. So. I, I, I'm going to say an A for KP thus far. Luca mm-hmm. A, a plus. Yeah, Luca Luca's pretty much been there. He didn't shoot great tonight, but through the first three, he's still the best player on the team. Mm-hmm. KP might ultimately be the guy that averages more points than Luca for the season, potentially. Luka's probably going to average more rebounds and assists. Luca is still the main <laughs> guy. Luca is the guy, and KP is uh, the running mate. So it is what it is. Uh, DeLon Wright. It's been up and down for him. I still think he's a very quality ad, but I've, I've never bought into the idea that he is the third man for yeah. us. I still say they need that third man, and that's going to have to come by way, by way of trade. Because or... Jackson, I like him a lot, but I don't think he's the third man either. So mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see how things shape up. Of course, the projected third man was Tim Hardway Jr., but he's been... Yeah. I don't want to say... He's been uh, not good to start the year. This this was not a good game for him. I know he, he got not, his points at the line, but yeah, he's not the worth the twenty mil that we're paying him this <laughs> no, year. No, no. So um, decent bench player, but incorporate the the contract and it's like what? That's yeah, like, what? Yeah. You so how much you put up? Uh, so hopefully we'll get more production. I'm I'm projecting uh better. I'm, I'm projecting better days for Tim Hardaway. I'm projecting better days for Delon and Brunson. Mm-hmm. I mean, all, all these guys. Um, yeah, the the team's better than we saw. We've seen we, them be better. Than we saw the day. I mean, so I mean, this is kind of good news. This is kind of a, a silver lining. Yeah, uh, we lost a, a close game to a really good team um, with not playing our best. Right. So I agree. So and with them having freaking C.J. McCollum going off for thirty-five, I believe. Yep. They're, uh, they're top two Lillard. guys outplayed our top two, especially yeah. with regard to efficiency. Points wise, yeah, but yeah, points wise, they were almost exact copies of each other. Yeah, like literally almost exact copies of each other. But the the efficiency they for are, Portland was off the no, charts. That, that duel, Maxi man, he started damn hot, but he ended up with fourteen. Yeah, he was five of five. He, he ended up five of ten. If you <laughs> if you would have put up, uh, you know, his shots, you know, with the his three arc. pointers was what was killing him. Yeah, because he got five threes after getting a bunch of shots at the rim. But yeah. 
anyway that uh that pretty much wraps up our thoughts on this game here uh thank you again to those who had tuned in just before this to our live stream when we did our game companion talking about the game and kind of commentating it mm-hmm. uh mild technical issue there at the very end of that stream but all the same uh we'll get this uploaded as well and uh until next time guys that's going to do it for us any you want to hit the tagline all right and remember every legend was once a prospect there you go salute